Hi, in this session, we'll try and address a few commonly asked questions regarding kidney stones. Sir, how common are kidney stones? Kidney stones is one of the most primitive diseases that we have known. And certainly the percentage of the kidney disease has increased with urbanization. So though if you see the statistics in the West, where in the 1970s, where the percentage of kidney stones were in two and a half percent, now we are seeing that 10 percent of the population will present with kidney disease at some point of time. So that is, it is that common, that's one in 10 may have kidney stone disease in their lifetime. So what exactly will they have? So what kind of symptoms will they have if they have kidney stones? Yeah. So the symptoms of the kidney stones may depend on the size and the location of the stone. It, most of the time they present with abdominal pain. It is usually to one side of the pain in the lower abdomen, either to the right or the left, or sometimes in the back where the pain radiates uh, from one side of the abdomen, either down or behind. So this is one of the classical uh, presentation that they have, what we call ureteric colic, where there's a pain that is starting at one place and radiating down below. So apart from that, they can have some burning sensation in the urine and some people can, can see blood in the urine and some people can pass stones by themselves and they can identify that they pass something out. So these are the common symptoms that people present with when they have kidney stone disease. Who are the people who commonly get these kidney stones, sir? Yeah. So most of the time kidney stone disease presents in second or third decade of life. So most often men than women. So and also it uh, it is not only the gender and it is not only the age. It depends on so many factors. So recently we have seen in 2008 there was an outbreak in China where because of a content called melamine which was there adulterated in the infant feeds. And the children as young as one year old they found that they are kidney stones and they are present with kidney failure. So we can say that no age is immune for the kidney stone disease. And the geographical location, the, the hotter and humid climates are associated with stone disease. It's because they, they, they have more and more sweat and they get dehydrated and the formation of stones is much easier in such situations. So it's the it's a location, geographical location and any age can get it and both, both the genders can get it. So maybe men is a, a slightly higher than women and commonly in the second and third decade. And as I said, it can come anytime. So are these stones hereditary? If my parents had it, is there a chance that I can also get kidney stones? Yeah, these are some of the common questions that we get to ask from the from the patients. So somebody having a kidney stone, so is it hereditary? Yes, it is possible. There are some stones which can happen either genetically or it, or it can be hereditary. So some of the examples are, we say hyperoxaluria. It's a kind of stone where the calcium is mixed with oxalate. So it is genetic disease. And there is other kind of uh, stone disease called cystinuria, where it is autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. Depending on that, it can present uh, either in the different age groups. And these are genetic and hereditary diseases. Yes, it is possible. And there is a certain condition which is more common, idiopathic familiar hypercalcium urea because they they pass a lot of lot of calcium in the urine and they tend to pass they tend to form stones yes stone disease can be hereditary can be familial can be genetic so as you mentioned there are different types of stones so is it important for us to know what type of stone a patient has and how exactly do we go about investigating this yes there are different kinds of stones is because different material can can lead to stone formation let's suppose what are the kinds of stones that we can usually uh, see so one is a uric acid stone why is it important to find a uric acid stone so uric acid stone disease is a systemic disease it is not that they not only form stones in the kidney they also have systemic manifestations like they have a joint swelling which we call gout so usually that appears either in the foot or in the hand it's only a single joint where there is a sudden pain and swelling in the joint and we see that the uric acid levels are high. When this uric acid levels are high, they get into the kidney and they form kidney stones. So this kind of stone disease, it's treatable. So once you take care of the diet, where you take less uric acid and make sure you consume medications to reduce the uric acid level, the stone incidence can be reduced. And these kind of stones are more common in, in the Arab world. So that is that is importance of try, uh, finding the type of the stone. So other other common stones like calcium stones or what we call stewart stones or what I said earlier, cystine stones. And these are important to know what is the origin of this disease and how can we prevent the disease and how can we treat the disease. So knowing the type of the stone will help us doing all these things. And to know the type of the stone, we have to examine the stone, what we call stone analysis, that will tell us what kind of stone it is. So if a patient is diagnosed to have a, a kidney stone, is it always necessary they have to get this removed surgically, sir? 
Yeah. So um, uh, most of the time, these stones, whether they need any intervention, it depends on the size and the location of the stone. So for example, the, the, the stone is in, in the kidney and that is not coming in way of the passage of the urine. So it is not, it is not blocking the passage of urine and most of the time, no intervention is necessary. Having said that, that's a location. And the size of the stone, the bigger the stone, yes, it, it would be necessary to remove the stone, either it's surgical or non-surgical. So there is a procedure called ESWL, where you don't have to do the surgery and you can, you can sort of break the stone from outside. So again, that depends on the location of the stone. So if it is obstructing the urine flow, yes, it needs an intervention if it is bigger and the chances of that passing on its own is small. Anything at the size of the stone less than seven, we can say that it might pass on its own on most of the occasions and more than seven, they might require intervention. Again, it might change on case to case basis. It is only a, a, a rule of thumb. That's all. So you mentioned that the, the stones, the main symptom that they have is pain, sir. Is there a possibility that the renal stones can cause the kidney failure as well? Yes. So some of these stones, these are silent stones where they may not occlude the urine, they, they may not occlude the urine passage. At the same time, they're growing inside. And these kind of stones are typically given the name stagon calculus. So you see that this stone, it, it goes, it goes into every crevice of the kidney, and this stone occupies the whole of the kidney and is going to block its function. So these kind of people who are these recurrent stone formers who have this tag on calculi, which is affecting both the kidneys, yes, they can end up in kidney failure. Though the chance of that happening is less, but it is a certain possibility. Thank you so much, sir, for shedding light on uh, renal stones. You're welcome, baby. Thank you very Thank much. You.